Wednesday, uh, Jessica and I and other uh, people from churches in Onalaska met with the school elementary principals and talked about a potential mentoring program that uh, we may be trying to implement this fall uh, in the schools. We're very excited about the potential of working with the schools there. Uh, going to be getting back to us uh, about how we can best make this work, and uh, we hope to share more information with you soon. Uh, we had also decided that this was Bike to Church Sunday for the end of Lacrosse Bike Week. And then we decided this morning that maybe it wasn't Bike to Church Sunday. Uh, if you rode your bike uh, today anyway, uh, there is a table out in the lobby and there is a uh, basket. You can put your uh, name in the basket to draw for prizes. But we're going to encourage people, uh, we're not going to draw today, we're going to encourage you if you want to ride your bike to come next Sunday by bicycle. And again, we'll, uh, you can put your name in the hats and we'll have a drawing for prizes after both services. So uh, please take advantage of that. It should be fun. This week, the fellowship committee meets on Monday. Tuesday evening is the community dinner. Um, I know they're still looking for a few bags of ice. Wes, are those the bag of ice slips there? So uh, if you want uh, to buy a bag of ice for the community dinner, uh, then uh, come up here and grab one of these tags uh, after the service. Uh, next Sunday, uh, Paul will be uh, leading worship. Uh, he is preaching on Thumbs Up as we continue our emoji series. And next Sunday is Father's Day. We're going to have gifts for the men of the church. So uh, please come and join us. Looking down the line, you've got an insert in your bulletin about the church picnic. It is earlier than usual this year. It is June 24th. Uh, so uh, take a look. Put that on your schedule. It is nice to know uh, a rough estimate of who's coming. So if you can fill out the little RSVP form, we appreciate that too. All right, let's go ahead and begin our worship with uh, peace and grace of Jesus Christ. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us lift up the name of our God. Let us praise the thankfulness of the Lord. For just as the Lord's greatness fills the heavens, the Lord's love the earth, preserving our life in the midst of trouble, let us, let us give thanks to the Lord for our God. The opening song is 657. Please be seated. The scripture this morning is from Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 to 11, and it can be found in the Pew Bibles in page uh, 1070. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, 
as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness, under the law, blameless. Yes, whatever gains I had, these I had come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on his faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Okay, it's time for the children to come up. Children's time. <laughs> you guys do you smell something we're kind of close to the cow pasture here this morning oh who are, who are those guys well, well I don't know if I really care for the shortcut of yours through the cow pasture only well what's wrong with it Sven we've taken this before and if we want to go to the logger game tonight we got to cut some time down to the fishing hole don't you know well, I don't know. It doesn't smell so good around here, you know, and you, you really have to watch where you walk, if you know what I mean. Oh. Whoa, Jesus. You betcha, I know. Them farmers were spreading that manure on the fields the other day. Phew, I was standing downwind. Oh, stinky. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I see you got your logger hat on. Are, are, are we still going to the logger game then tonight? Yeah. Lena wants to go. She likes being with the church family. It's a fun time, and it's nice surrounding yourself with happy and fun people. You know, it's kind of like being washed in God's love with peanuts and Cracker Jacks. <laughs> it's a grand slam. Yeah. Yeah. The, you, only the, the logger game, do you remember when we used to play ball in the field out here? The, that time you slid into what you thought was third base? <laughs> it wasn't third base by a long shot, you know. Oh, yeah. Don't remind me of that. I had to take three showers to get that stink <laughs> off me. Well, well, at least you were a good sport about it then, so. Well, speaking of good sports, do you know what they call a grumpy old cow? No, only what do they call a grumpy cow? Moody. Well, that's a good one. Uh, oh, shucks, there. Only I lost my favorite lure there in the field here. Oh, oh, I think I see it right there in that cow pie. Oh. Uh, do, I, do I really want that lure that bad then, so? Well, sure you do, Sven. Just because it's dirty, you know, we can wash it off. It'll be clean and good to go. You know, like God can do with us. Well, huh? What you mean there? Well, we can get pretty stinky and moody with our attitudes and actions, but when we let Jesus wash away our sins, we can be clean again. Isn't that worth saving? Well, if you put it that way, for, for sure it is. Okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll clean it off and then it'll be good as new. Who knows? The fish might even like the smell, you know. I suppose we better get going, Sven. We got a lot of fish to catch, and then we got to get to that dare logger game to boot. Yeah, you betcha. I'm ready with my lure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch me some good fish with this here stinky lure. I, I got that feeling. Let's get to the fishing hole. Okay, take, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. <laughs> Thank you. 
Man, those guys are silly, aren't they? Ugh, playing ball in a cow pasture, that's dangerous. Ooh, uh, we're taking a shortcut there, but they sound like they're going to have some fun fishing, and then they're going to the loggers game tonight. Uh, and they sound like maybe they learned something about having a stinky attitude versus having a good attitude, too. Any of you guys going to the game tonight? Yep. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, it is fun to hang out with people who are smiling and having a good time, isn't it? Have you ever been around somebody who was grumpy? Yeah. Do you like being around grumpy people? No. no. <laughs> I got a strong answer on that one. Uh, uh, Part of what we're talking about today is how our attitude kind of affects the people around us. Just like if we step in something stinky, everybody around us knows about it. If you've got a grumpy or a stinky attitude, everybody else is like, eh, I don't want to be around them. So um, as Christians, we should try to have a, a good attitude, a happy attitude, and then people like to be around us. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we give you thanks uh, for the chance to uh, laugh a little bit and to uh, share some joy. Uh, we ask that uh, when we get into a bad mood, you would help us to turn it around so that we can uh, instead be pleasing to those around us. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right, uh, we do have Children's Church with uh, Jessica today. So if you are four or older and want to go to Children's Church, head back that way. We're going to head and move on with the prayer of confession uh, this morning. Uh, you can find this in the bulletin or on the overhead. O oh God, hear our prayer. We need to know that beyond us you are. For while we seek our own salvation, it cannot be had through striving. We think highly of ourselves, O oh God, but we are not great only driven by dreams of greatness. And we have stumbled upon such dreams until finally we have fallen and plunged into the pit. We cannot see. The midnight dark steals our sight. We cannot breathe. The stale air smothers our breath. We cannot hear. Our pounding heart deafens our ears. We cannot bear it. For here in the pit, we meet our demons, our fiercest enemies, our terrible idols, things seen substituted for things unseen, things fleeting worshipped in place of things eternal. Here in the pit, the fact of our baseness explodes the myth of our greatness. Here in the pit, we stand alone. And yet, O oh God, we are not alone. In our moment of darkness, your light shines most clearly. When we are smothered by sin, your spirit breathes within us new life and courage. You shake the foundations of our life, open the doors of the prisons we build for ourselves, and break our chains. Yes, Lord, we shall be saved. You have freed us from bondage to sin and death and given us courage to love and be loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our response song is Fill My Cup, Lord. Our June sermon series is called Emoji Faith. And emoji, if you missed last week, are those little cartoon faces and symbols that pop up in text messages and emails and seem to have taken over the world these days. Now, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but an emoji is actually designed to convey one thing, one emotion. It's intended to add life and meaning to the dry, shorthand text of an uh, online message. So why would we preach on emoji? Well, because there are some religious emotions or thoughts that can also be conveyed simply. 
For example, last week we talked about how Christians can be happy in the midst of good or bad situations because we know God will work all things out for good in the end, either in this life or in our eternal life. Everybody wants to be happy, right? So not much debate there. Now this week's emoji is a little more controversial. No, it's not a soft serve chocolate ice cream cone. Uh, it's, and I'm, I'm sorry to say this in church, a cheerful little doggy dropping. Meet the poop emoji. But I'm just gonna call him stinky for our purposes today. Now you can be forgiven for thinking that stinky looks like a pile of soft serve ice cream. It's an easy mistake to make. He is so cute and happy looking after all. Now, quick story here. My wife bakes custom cakes for the kids' birthdays. Uh, and she asks them every year what they want. One year, Anna wanted a unicorn cake, and uh, uh, Annalisa made it complete with a sugar rainbow that stood up and arced over it. And another time, Eric had a Lego pirate cake with cannons that fired cannonballs. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Now, these days, the kids aren't into themes so much as they are into flavors. I want German chocolate cake or pineapple upside down cake or carrot cake. And uh, for Eric's 17th birthday uh, last year, uh, Annalise and I at that point did not know that much about emoji yet, but the kids wanted a super duper chocolate cake. So my wife baked a rich chocolate cake, she baked in chocolate chunks, she made uh, homemade special chocolate frosting, and then she piped little decorative peaks of frosting all over the top of the cake. And when the kids saw it, they burst out laughing. <laughs> because, of course, the peaks look like that stinky emoji. Anna and Eric instantly dubbed it the poop cake, and it is now a, a family legend. And I will say that the cake tasted pretty good anyway. So why are we talking about the stinky emoji today? Well, because the Apostle Paul does just that in our reading from Philippians. Paul starts off humble, <laughs> not, Instead, he, he boasts, if you want to brag about being Jewish, he says, I've got you beat. I was born into a respectable tribe. I was circumcised as a baby. I was a devout Pharisee. I am a scrupulous observer of the religi religious law. I am a righteous dude. But then Paul kind of turns in a surprising direction. He says, you know, all these things I've been bragging about, all these credentials and achievements... They're just rubbish, he says, compared to the excellency of knowing Jesus Christ. Now, our English translators are really softening up the original Greek language here. The NRSV says rubbish. The New International Version of the Bible says garbage. The Old King James Version was more literal, and it uh, said that compared to Christ, all these fine achievements are dung. Now, in reality, the Greek word here is skubalon, which means literally sewer trash. Animal droppings, dung, poop. All these fine things are poop. Paul is saying that everything he used to think valuable and fine really stinks. Nothing. Not your reputation, not your education, not your family, not your money, not your nationality, not your power. Nothing can earn you a spot in heaven. No earthly thing cancels out the dead weight and the stinkiness of our sin. All the things that we're proud of, all the things that we have done, stink compared to the simple gift of Jesus Christ. Paul says that he would throw away all his privileges. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings, even becoming like him in death, if somehow... I may attain the resurrection from the dead. And yet it is human pride, uh, human to take pride in these earthly things. We, we stack them up like little piles of trophies, counting the years we've come to church or the times we've read the Bible and thinking, well, maybe this will be enough to climb our way into heaven. Oh, maybe I've done another mission project. Now maybe this will be enough. Or we compare our good deeds and our credentials to the person sitting next to us, and we judge them maybe as less in order to build ourselves up more. They say pride goes before a fall, and it's a long fall from the pedestal we can put ourselves on. Now, Jesus knew some Pharisees, uh, members of the uh, same religious movement that Paul would be part of. 
Uh, and they took pride in their religiosity just like Paul did. In Matthew 23, 27, Jesus compares these stuck-up religious snobs to whitewashed tombs. Jesus says, you know, it looks pretty impressive on the outside uh, with all your rules and ob observances. Uh, you look like you're good and decent people, but inside you're just full of rotting bones and putrid flesh. The smell is nauseating. In the movie Facing the Giants, the football coach has a similar bit of uh, wisdom for the kids on his team. He says, attitude is the aroma of the heart. If your attitude stinks, it means your heart is not right. In other words, you might look clean and put together on the outside, but if your attitude stinks, it reflects some putrid rottenness within. God is sensitive to that. Psalm 51 tells us God has no delight in sacrifice. God would not be pleased with the sweet scent of a burnt offering. Instead, the sacrifice acceptable to God is a humble spirit. God will not despise a contrite heart. What do you smell like to God? What do you smell like to the people around you? What is the state of your heart? Now, it's easy to have a rotten, stinking attitude, even when you're going about the business of the Lord. Several years ago, I got a, a call from the county jail, and a guy who'd been coming to my church for about a month or so had been arrested. Uh, it, it was his umpteenth DUI, and he was going to be locked up for months to come. Uh, he'd lost his driver's license, which meant he was going to lose his job with the trucking company, too. And he called me with his one phone call to say, Pastor, you're the only guy I know in town. Can you clean out my apartment so the landlord doesn't throw away all my stuff? <sighs> Not what I wanted to do with my one day off that week. I grumbled a lot. First, I had to get the key from the landlord, and because uh, this guy was behind on his rent, I had to uh, pay half a month's rent to the landlord to get the key. Grumble, grumble. The apartment stank with rotting food and half-empty beer cans and cigarette butts that I had to clean up. Grumble, grumble. There was trash everywhere. Grumble, grumble. The guy had no furniture, just a, an old sleeping bag rolled out on the living room floor next to a little TV and a VCR and some old videotapes of, of crummy movies. <sighs> grumble, grumble. Most everything was broken. Grumble, grumble, I had to find some place to store all this junk. Grumble, grumble. Until I realized what a lonely life this man led. Laying on the floor at night, drinking beer and watching Smokey and the Bandit on his little TV. Until I realized that I could easily imagine my older son, who at the time was making a lot of bad decisions, ending up in a similar place until I realized that with a few bad breaks or a few bad choices, I could have ended up here myself. Right there in that filthy apartment, God transformed my grumbling heart into a praying heart, praying for the man, praying for my son, praying for myself, praying that I might judge less and love more, that was a miracle of God's grace that day, breaking my heart and pride and changing my attitude, changing my stinky attitude. I didn't enjoy doing that good deed that day, but I left with a better attitude and a sweeter spirit. Attitude is the aroma of the heart. Make sure yours doesn't stink. Instead, can you be that person who brightens and sweetens a whole room by your presence? You know the sort. They walk into a room and instantly it is a better place just because they are there. You know those people. You want to be around them. I'm thinking uh, this morning of Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha. In one of the strange stories in Scripture, Jesus is visiting their house, and Mary pours a jar of expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and then wipes them clean with her hair. And the Apostle John tells us that the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. 
Now, Mary was criticized for this extravagant symbolic act, but Jesus defended her attitude and her generous, loving heart. I suspect Mary was one of those people that you just wanted to be around because her sweetness filled the atmosphere. Friends, don't place your trust and hope in the worthless dung of this earthly life. And don't let your heart or your attitude stink. Instead, set your eyes on heavenly things and place your trust in the Lord. A humble heart is a pleasing offering to the Lord. Let your heart be full of love, and may your attitude sweeten the world. Amen. Our uh, hymn of response this morning is a little bit unusual. I went looking for hymns that involve smell. I found one. Uh, it was written by John Newton, uh, the author of Amazing Grace, and the last hymnal this was published in came out in 1857. So we're probably the first people to sing this hymn for about 150 years. So enjoy. Amen. So we can make uh, old songs into new songs, I guess. Okay, as we enter into our prayer time, what do we want to lift up in prayer this morning? So uh, Mary Martin uh, had been in the hospital with pneumonia, and she got released this week. She's still uh, healing, but uh, she's on the road, and we uh, give God praise for that. So we lift up uh, people who are victims of natural disasters, uh, the, the showy ones are the volcanoes in Hawaii and Guatemala, uh, but we've got fires and uh, uh, violence going on around the world, uh, so we pray for people's safety and protection in these uh, difficult times. So prayers for those who serve and protect us, and uh, special thanks uh, that uh, this past week uh, we haven't had uh, the violence that we've been seeing lately, and we pray that this might be uh, the beginning of a new, uh, new phase in our civic life. Uh, and actually, I, I got an update from Nancy this morning. Her mother passed away. So Nancy Dorn's mother passed away this morning. Um, she'd been in severe decline. Um, so uh, the family is at peace with this, but it's, it's still a sad time. So please be praying for Nancy and her family. So prayers for Jerry, who survived a heart attack and is now dealing with cancer. So... Okay, so we keep praying for Doug's sister, Ellen, who uh, lost her husband a year ago, but she's retiring now and uh, looking forward to some good things in life. All right, so prayers for our building project. Uh, as we see the progress, we pray for the safety of the workers, and uh, we continue to lift up our financial need as we uh, finish off paying for that, too. So thanks. Prayers for your daughter, Tricia, who had surgery and is healing, and we pray for continued progress. 
Yes, uh, prayers for the positive results from the meetings in Singapore. We would love to see peace on the Korean Peninsula. Yes, uh, Renee Cashin Schmidt's uh, daughter died unexpectedly this week. Uh, uh, she was relatively young, uh, and she leaves behind two daughters, one who just graduated from high school and the other in college. So a uh, tough time for uh, the family there. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads. We'll begin with a moment of silent prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you that you are merciful and loving. We lift up to you our friends. Many have had tough weeks. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for peace. We pray that uh, there would be a quietness in their hearts instead of uh, endless questions. We pray for comfort and for hope for them. Lord, we lift up uh, those who are healing and those who are undergoing medical tests or interventions. Lord, in the, uh, when we are not well, it affects us completely. We pray that you would uh, strengthen the spirits of these folks. Help them to know your healing touch and your love. And help them to feel your healing touch in their bodies. Lord, we pray for those who serve us, whether in international service or in uh, service here at home. We pray that you would keep them safe, that they would bring comfort and peace where they are needed. Lord, we lift up our world. There are so many natural disasters affecting people. So many have lost homes in Hawaii. So many people have died in Guatemala because of these volcanoes. There are wildfires, earthquakes, and other disasters affecting many parts of the world. And if that wasn't enough, humankind brings its own kind of disaster through war and through violence. Lord, we pray for peaceful hearts, for reconciliation, for an understanding between nations and a love between uh, men and women and brothers and sisters that no one would ever again feel like they need to take up a weapon in order to make a point. Lord, we continue to pray for the future. There are people who have graduated from school. There are people who are retiring. We pray that you would uh, fill their days ahead with positive things. Lord, we pray for the future of our congregation and our building project. May it be a way of welcoming new people and growing your kingdom. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us to fill each day with positive things, things that carry the sweet scent of heaven, things that attract and not repel others. Help us to be ambassadors of your kingdom so that all might come to know your love. We ask these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and we join together in the prayer that you taught us. Our, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
We have a chance to share our gifts and offerings with the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers to come around. Uh, if you would like to give electronically, you can use the information on the screen. O oh Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. Receive now these gifts that we offer in thanksgiving for your great faithfulness. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. I hope you've been blessed by our time together. I hope the sermon didn't stink. If you're a guest and you'd like to know more about this uh, church family where we seek to serve God with a, a uh, pleasant spirit, then ask the folks around you. They can tell you about the ways that they have been lifted up uh, by spending time with these brothers and sisters. If you'd like to get together for prayer this week, I'd be happy to spend some time with you. Uh, give me a call. Remember, Friday I leave for the weekend, though, so uh, you should give me a call before Friday. Um, we're going to uh, close with some uh, music and uh, blessing. Uh, we've actually had a double blessing day, if you had noticed before the tr uh, service and uh, after the service. In addition to Sandy on the organ, we have Faith playing on the piano this morning, and it's just so wonderful to hear their good music together. Thank you. All right, let's sing together. I love that image of bold Christians. As we go forth today, go boldly. Go bearing God's love. Go and be a blessing. Amen. <laughs>